You guys ever get that feeling where you play a visual novel, you do it for the story, you immerse yourself into the story? Basically what I do, that's what I usually am doing when I'm playing a visual novel. I usually go through a story, I see how good the story is. If it's good enough, then I'll review it like I am going to be doing with this visual novel that you guys probably have seen on Game Jewel and a lot of other uh, people have actually played it themselves. Um, this visual novel, uh, I don't really like it a bit, but it's fine because it's known as a fanfic, so, you know, anyway, but anyway, I'm your host, K the Three-Tailed Fox, and this is K Reviews Ruby Blaze Adventure Visual Novel. Let's begin. So, what I want to tell you guys about this is Ruby Blake's Adventure, it basically starts off with your character falling down out of a tree for some reason. Just for some fucking obvious reason, he falls off a tree, and he becomes unconscious for a few hours. Uh, it starts off with a prologue, and then it goes into the 12 chapters, which then ends with an epilogue, which I haven't actually watched to read the epilogue, because the epilogue is basically probably going to be a true ending or something like that, even though I already saw the actual full ending of what the fuck happened. Uh, basically, it just goes into this huge thing, and it's really, really hard to get all this stuff through my fucking head when I'm trying to read this visual novel, and I don't even get any of this. Um, I, I thought that the, the story was kind of alright. It's down there between like a 5 out of 10, maybe a 6 out of 10 in the story. I uh, kind of, you know, I wasn't really a huge fan of the story. Um, it, it was kind of fanfic, but I would have loved it if it was a if it was a visual novel that kept it to its actual original Ruby like story. But it it was fine. It was all right. I can guarantee that, especially when I got to play as my OC. But I just didn't like how I my OC was stuck with just shadow powers because when a creator makes a visual novel or a game, he lets the character the, the per player choose their character's name, which we got to do. But he also gets to choose what kind of things we get to have our character do during that game. And it should also go with a visual novel. What should our OCs be able to do? Should they have like dust powers like fire, ice, uh, fucking explosives, and all that other stuff? And that would have been really cool. I would have actually loved to see that in the sequel, or at least in the third game, when the third game is released as a sequel, because we already know there's going to be three games, three, three Ruby uh, visual novels on Game Joel. Um, another thing that actually kind of occurred with the grammar issues in this fucking game now. Oh my god, the grammar issues were horrible. I would read this, and I think I had face cam on when I was actually doing the videos. But you can just see how fucking annoyed I was when I was doing... When I was doing the, uh, when I was reading through the text and everything, you could see how, annoying I, uh, how annoyed I was. When I couldn't pronounce a word due to the fact that it was spelled incorrectly and due to the punctuation being screwed up, fucked up, a bunch of other stuff. Game developers don't do that. They don't speed rush. They don't fucking do it half ass when they're fucking making a game or a visual novel. You take your fucking time and you reread all your shit. You make sure there's no spelling issues. If there are, then you fucking rewrite the word. And you don't do everything half-assed, because that's what I thought this visual novel was. I thought this visual novel was half-assed, and that, that's probably why it's going to get a bad rating, because it was half-assed. Now, that doesn't mean people need to go and comment on this video and say, oh, you're just a fucking hater of Ruby. No, I'm a fucking huge fan. I've been watching Ruby ever since fucking 2013 when the first volume came out, so don't fucking tell me that I'm a piece of shit, because you're a piece of shit. The people who say I'm a piece of shit are a piece of shit. The other reason why I kind of like this is because even though the punctuation grammar was sucked, I wanted to see more with our. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more characters coming out. I wanted to see like. Uh, I wanted to see a lot more. I wanted to see like. Velvet. I wanted to see at least their dialogue, but no, he didn't put it in. He could have made the chapters a little bit longer, maybe around twenty to thirty minutes long. Cause that's usually what I'm a visual novel is, and also a visual novel is actually not supposed to be contained in chapters, it's supposed to be contained into a four hour story of you just reading the entire story without having to cut through and download the fucking game every day for the chapters. I played Soccer Spirit, and Soccer Spirit is a full-fledged four hour story. It has no chapters whatsoever, it's a four-fledged hour, it's a four hour fledged, just fledged out story. That's what you call a visual novel. 
This is more like reading just a regular fucking book with chapters and everything. It just makes me feel like I'm reading just a book instead of a visual novel. Even though a visual novel is basically a book, it's an e-book or something like that, but it's just supposed to have a story. I thought the story was kind of confusing, and it did get confusing at the, at the end. The beginning, I was like, what the fuck's going on? The beginning was like, and then the ending was like, what the fuck? And all that, like, I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Um... Uh, I, I would have liked it if it was actually done a bit better. Not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a douchebag about it. I'm just trying to say that the visual novel could have done a little bit better, and it, it could have done the. So far, the the story was kind of all right. I can give you that, but it wasn't like fully all right. It wasn't like, oh my god, this is amazing. I did get a bit bored at it at, at times when I was reading through it because of the grammar issues, the punctuations, the character text. Um, and just a bunch of other stuff, and there wasn't that much, like, 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 funny moments in the visual novel, like, you could see in, like, in, like, other visual novels, like, how a shoujo and Sakura Spirit, it's more like a serious, like, visual novel, instead of what Ruby was basically also supposed to have was humor in it, this almost had basically no humor whatsoever, and that is not Ruby, because Ruby is actually supposed to have comedy in it, if you've actually watched the goddamn show, and you would know that it does have a few funny moments in it. And actually, that's what I love the show about, is because it had a few funny moments. Another reason, the story was fucking short. It clocked in about maybe two to three hours long. Uh, I beat, I think I beat that in about maybe about an hour to two hours. And uh, that was just because some of the videos were non-commentary, because it was basically supposed to act like a walkthrough or a read-through, whatever you want to call it. And it was just clocked in about two to three hours. Visual novels would just be about four to six hours long. But having a visual novel that's about two hours long, two to three hours long, actually really disappointed me because that is not a full-fledged visual novel or a game. It 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 kind of pissed me off, upset me a bit, uh, and how I actually was capable of finishing that. And also another thing that also pissed me off about this is how every fucking time an update of this game came out, I had to go back to GameJolt.com and I had to re-update the game just to get a new chapter, like. That's not what you do. The easiest fucking thing to do is to download, to create all the chapters and then smash them all together and then bring it out. Bring us a teaser demo or at least some sort of thing that will give us entertainment until the actual full game comes out. Um, so more reasons. Uh, it was short, but also the character. I thought the character models were kind of all right with the, even though there was a few like cuts um, where you like uh, like where uh, Blake's bow was a bit cut in half or something like that. I did the game did crash a bit when I was playing it, um, and it's only for fucking iPhones, iOS, and and Windows and Linux and fucking uh, Macintosh or Apple, whatever fucking want to call it. I don't know why Game Joy isn't letting him do uh, Android. I would really love to see an Android version of this. I would play the Android version. Probably more than the PC version. I don't really don't know. Uh, frame rate in this game, in this visual novel, is horrible. Even though all visual novels have horrible frame rate, and you actually have to uh, you have to record it using a browser, using the uh, the the, uh, the region thing, the desktop uh, recording uh, little block thing. You have to use that so that your frame rate doesn't drop a lot. And um, just so you guys know, the the story was it was, it was confusing. It was it was confusing. I thought it was confusing. At the end, at the point where you're finding your brother, and it was just like you're you were capable of taking him out in like two to three hits. Usually, a boss fight in an anime would take more than two to three hits to kill, or at least defeat. And you're making our character really OP. Like at least make it to where. Like, alright, so he, he knocks his brother out for a bit. But then, one thing that really got me confusing was the fact that we destroyed a fucking Dark Matter Crystal. Like, what the hell is a Dark Matter Crystal? Like, alright, I know this is fanfic, but give us more fucking information on what the hell a Dark Matter Crystal is. Because I don't even know what the fuck it was. I was reading everything, and I was like, what is this? Alright, it's something that destroys the universe, the galaxy, and everything. Uh, can it possess people? Yes, it can possess people. But can we use it as something to aid us in the military or something like that. Is it is it is it really deadly against the human race? Is it deadly against the faunus race? Can it ex can it exterminate the faunus and the humans from Earth or I mean from remnant and can it actually blow up remnant? We already know it can possess people due to the fact that 
uh, Abandon, which is our character's brother, made Dark Matter masks that he would put on the future Team Ruby to turn them into mind slaves, and um, he would use them to go and try to kill our main character. Um, another thing is, the, the spelling is horrible, and I can get you that, give you that. There's all that other shit that's going in, it is going into the fan right now. I'm going to throw all that shit into the fan. It's like, cut the fucking shit up. I don't care anymore. Uh, I, and we needed to see, we needed to see one ship, but that was it. And that was a, sort of a solar eclipse-like scene. But we didn't get to see any more, like, actual things. But then what I actually thought would redeem it was the fact that our character married Blake in the future. But one thing that didn't fucking make sense is the fact that our character has been living for over 1,000 years. And the fact that Blake hasn't died, even though she's probably over 1,000 years old. That doesn't make fucking sense. You need to put more detail on what makes sense about this fucking visual novel if you want people to actually read it. And... The ratings are fine in visual novel. I thought the ratings were fine, even though it was a Ruby visual novel, but it could do better in the sequel if the grammar issues were fixed, punctuation was fixed, uh, everything was fixed, and you took it slow. It takes about a year to create a game, maybe two years. Don't fucking fool this fucking half asses shit just because people on your goddamn page is telling you to do this shit fast. Don't listen to people like them. Do it on your own time and your own pace. If it takes you five years, it would take you five years to release it. That means that if it took you five years, it would be fucking amazing and people will love it to death. That is how a few indie games that I've played have came out to be probably one of the best games that I've ever played due to the fact that I've actually fucking played the game and actually enjoyed it. But having to deal with this bullshit in this visual novel, it was just utter disappointment. It was it was kind of disappointing to me. I didn't like it that much. Uh, I've seen better. I played Kawa Shoujo, enjoyed that. Played Sakura Spear. I'm still playing through that. And that that original novel is amazing. Played through Ruby Blades Adventure. Got boring right in the middle of it. Probably around chapter seven or eight. I got boring. It got boring because it was basically almost the same stuff. And also how um, he repeated dialogue over and over again in some of the sections. It, it kind of it annoyed me how some of the dialogue was actually repeated in some of the chapters um, just so that they can do actions to the other characters and all that and it was kind of do it. Also, give us a choice. These visual novels are usually for the choices, like an ending choice. Should we use the crystal for bad, basically destroying the universe and use it for ourselves, or should we use it for good and destroy the crystal and destroy ourselves? I don't know. But I hope in the sequel and in the third one we get to have our own character choices and I hope someday he does like a, a Ruby dating simulator because I would laugh if there was a dating simulator of Ruby. But anyway, my final verdict for Ruby Blake's Adventure has to be, and this is disappointing, it has to be a, um, it's going to be a 7 out of 10. It was, it was, I can give it that, it was a 7 out of 10. I thought it was alright. It, it got disappointing at the very end because we didn't get to have our own choice of a bad ending or a good ending. Uh, there, it was, really wasn't no bad ending or good ending unless you played the demo of it because then there would be a good or a bad ending or demo. Uh, it just gets it gets a 7 out of 10 for a reason because of there's all the fucked up shit in it that I couldn't understand and all the goddamn issues with the spelling, the punctuations, the grammar, everything. Fix your shit, please, before I even play the sequel, because I do not want to play the sequel if you're going to do it half-assed. I will not even play any more of these visual novels that are Ruby fan made if they're going to be made half-assed. I'm not trying to be a dick, but you need to take your time. You need to take your time, and you need to make it slow-paced. You need to take your time creating the characters, creating the layouts, creating everything. Take your time, and then bring it out to us. Like, maybe give us, like, teasers, maybe give us a... A trailer, just give us anything that you can do that will make us be excited for the visual novel. Because I would love to see Ruby Blake's Adventure 2 to be a major success on Game Joel and actually maybe get mentioned by Rooster Teeth someday. But anyway, this is I'm your host, K, the Three Tailed Fox. This was my review, review of Ruby Blake's Adventure visual novel. I will see you guys next time when I'm out there doing another Ruby. Um, review either that or doing another visual review visual novel review either that or i will be doing a anime review and i will be showing you guys what's at the end of this of what 
the next anime review will be and let's just hope thank to god that this video does not get a goddamn copyright strike i will bitch and moan anyway i'm your host k the three tails fox man nari and my fox is watching over you all and i'll see you guys in the next video peace